Hey guys, welcome. Hi. Hello, where do you come from? I'm the sea. Well, we are here today to give you a little video about the importance and improvement of your, of your, now I'm there, spinal rotation. Okay? What is that? The spine is of many vertebrae and you can move them independently. What? <laughs> you will see. So, if you don't know our channel yet, check it out, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the bell. Um, to get notice, notice about all the new videos coming up every week. Did you do that? Go ahead, do it now. Let's get started. Okay. All right, spinal rotation. What is it, why it's so important and how can we improve it? First of all, when we dance tango, and this is what we do all the time, we have a partner in front of us. But there are many movements where we move in a different direction than him or her. All right? And then you see already that I want to dance with my partner, but I want to be doing steps not only towards him or away from him or her. Okay? So this is spinal rotation. Now let's have a close look in what the spine actually is. It is all the way from the coccyx to right here in I'm the head. Show it my body. Yes. Come a little bit more to the center. And you see in sayaka that you have these curves in the spine, right? You have this curve in the neck, then you have the thoracic spine and another curve going here that is the natural arch in the lumbar spine. Good. And actually, what we will focus on today is, first of all, to separate our centers that you have learned about already, as of the center of gravity, the lower one, to go down, and the center of levity, the upper one, to go up. What does that mean? That means that the lower vertebras are creating space between each other, so that we can move them. And to do that, Sayaka is pulling her belly button inside so that this gets stretched and longer. Yes, you can see it. And now we have this area free to move. Yes. Good. So, upper center up, lower center down. This is what we call the first dissociation. Not Essential. association, but dissociation. Yeah. And this is essential, fundamental, how do you say, it's something that we need to do to start to do the rotations, which we call the second dissociation. So remember, first dissociation, center of gravity down, center of levity, upper center up. Second dissociation, we call the different rotations. They're going into different directions in rotation. Good. Okay, we do a first exercise to... Learn. Yes. We need a chair. You need a chair and then you can go with us. Grab you can pause the video, get your chair and we will show you. Maybe we come a bit closer yeah. so you can see it better. All right. So. You see Sayaka is sitting on the chair rather to the edge because then your legs are more free to stand well. Okay. So we sit into the front edge of the chair, sit bones are connected into the ground and your feet are comfortably placed. See that your knees have like more or less a 90 degrees and you're really comfortable. Think of the center of gravity like grounding down into the chair and the chair center of levity going up. So you create space as Josh explained before, right Josh? Right, I did. And you All see right. that her lower spine is straight. It's not arched, curved, but it's straight. So you can already feel a little bit how to do that. You can see yourself in the mirror or you can move forward, backward a little bit. Try to have them long and you can feel with your hands also where your spine is located. We interlace our fingers now and put them on top of our solar plexus in the middle of the chest, more or less, like right here. Have the shoulders relaxed down and the elbows can be out and also relaxed. From here, we 
start and we try to rotate where our fingers interlace. We want to rotate this a little bit to one side, palm back to the middle and rotate it a little bit to the other side and come back to the middle. Both sit bones want to be really, really melting into the chair. You don't want to have one knee going more front or the other, or one sit bones leaving the chair. Very and good. Go. And you do that a few times. You can do it now with Sayaka. And also, while you do it, try to feel how your spine is moving. Also, that in the end of the movement, you might feel that there's a limit in your movement. When you feel the limit, try not to push too much through, but, no, not that, mm -hmm. but try to just mobilize also your very low vertebras and think that your belly button wants to rotate a little bit in that direction too. Exactly. Then you can go a little further. And, and always remember to keep your belly button active in, don't let your center collapse. We are very low. active. All right, last time. And we're done. Good. Good. Maybe you could feel that when you are rotated, that your pelvis wants to rotate as well. It wants to move a little bit. That is just because the lowest vertebra is actually the coccyx. And it's down here and connected to the pelvis. So you need to be able to dissociate this lower part from the rotation of the upper part. Let's check out how this works in standing. We were sitting right now, we are very present, still the feeling how our sits bones were on the chair. Now get up on both of your legs and bend your knees slightly, have the um, idea of sitting down. I will do it like this so you can see me from the back. So maybe I do from the side. Okay, and from here, we do the same. The hand again, interlace? Yes, interlace. And when you interlace them, when you stand, it's more important a little bit that you really try to not push your ribs out and flare them open, but you can use your hands to connect them. So you feel just closed, that your sternum is on top of your um, pubic bone. And we go again, we turn to one side and the other. As you see here in Yash, we try not to move the pelvis too much. This is what naturally happens in the beginning. But really try to let your center of gravity going down and create space for a light rotation in the upper body. It's really stabilizing your pelvis and make your spine flexible. You see very nice, the shoulders are down and he's breathing. I can hear his breathing. No, never stop breathing. <laughs> it's not very healthy. When you start breathing, you want to work with it, you can breathe out when you rotate. So you can say and in while coming back and out and in. Good. Doing this a couple of times and then we will step it up one more thing. Yes, but remember when you ever, whenever you do movements that are not comfortable or not in your repertoire yet, you need to relax a little bit your body in between so that the nerves can process what has happened. Good. How Good. do we step it up? We step it up onto one leg. All right? Because this in tango will be always the case. You will always be exactly. on one leg and in a rotation. So we did three steps. We were sitting on the chair. There our pelvis is fixated so we cannot move it. Now we were on two legs, now our feet and pelvis were fixated, so we cannot move it so easily. Third step is to be on one leg, and there the chance is very light mm -hmm. that we do this, yes? Don't. It's no. a no-go. We want to build an awareness, and sometimes this takes a few times to try, and this we will do it by putting our weight on one foot, and have our base leg, so the leg that has the weight, tiny bend and active. So you can try to really engage your muscles. The inner if, thighs yes. go together. But all your muscles really want to engage as if you want to jump, mm -hmm. right? Like this, you can control where your leg is. And then 
again we start moving. You can have the hands here or try sometime also to have them more open, elbows down, shoulders and down and we move. We move again, we rotate our lower spine. Hi. Hi. So you see we can say hello to other people without losing our stance. Hi. Hi. <laughs> bye bye. See you again in the next rotation, Sayaka. Belly button Hello. into the spine, feel the connections in between your legs and make sure your pelvis is not moving. See that very nice in Yoshi, you might change your leg to try the other side as well. Change, feel again, powerful leg, activate, engage the muscles mm -hmm. to control it. Also, you can activate your gluteus a little bit. Belly button in and we go and we go the other side. Exactly. We understand, we feel that, and we give our body time to learn that. So it's a very controlled movement to not move the hips while directing the upper body into different directions. All right. All right. And Good. you'll feel here. Work. Yes. Now, this is very easy to do when we do this, right? But we want to be aware of where we move. And we said spinal rotation, not shoulder. Uh, Shimmy. <laughs> Shimmy shot. What is that? Well, you know. Um, so that's why we kept our hands here. And we want you to really pay attention what it feels like inside your body. Because you can build receptors inside to feel and build awareness of where you are in which body part. All right. All right, All right. guys. Well, well done. done. That we hope it. you enjoyed it. You know, we told you it's not so easy to build that, so take your time and do it a few times and not worrying about fast or, or big. Right. Good. So, if you liked it, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you didn't do so. And when you do that, tick the bell because then you will be notified about the next ones. Good. See you next time. Bye.